Hi, everybody. This is Vicki Lee. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe. I have started this channel last July. I have been speaking a lot. There are a lot of speaking modules that I've done and teaching that I've done. And we are wrapping up a series on communication. And just about time I think I'm done, God says, no, you're not done. I want you to go further. And so we're going to do this and another segment. Today, I'm going to give more of my personal testimony. As you know, if you know my speaking, I do share a lot about myself. I went through a lot of catastrophic uh, events in life, and God has so wonderfully preserved me through it all. And, and I think that he did that probably so that I could speak and teach to hurting people in this world, to people who need a roadmap, and I speak his word, and, um, and I'm trying to just reach out to a very hurting society. I was told at 12 years old, you'll be called to step forward and speak in a very sad, very dangerous time in our world. And I think we can all agree that we have arrived at that unfortunate intersection. So God brought me here in this lifetime to experience a lot, to not only survive it, but to thrive in spite of it, to keep his word front and center through all the, the good and bad and the um, tests and the failures and the great wins, all of these chapters that I've been through. And so we're doing a series on communication and I wanted to come back one more time. I want to take the lid off of my own privacy and I want to share a story with you. We talked about the Bible yesterday and we talked about how stories are either blessings or they are warnings for society. My story with my family is going to be a warning and this is not meant to just blabber it one more time. This is meant to bring it back into public discourse to show you, to maybe have you think about where you are, where you're going or whatnot. If my story can help one person, it's been worth it. I was born and raised in a family that was Christian very um, church oriented and um, both sides of the family. My grandmother on my father's side played the church for the church in the 1920s and she didn't read music and she had a little turn stool and she would play all that she knew. And then she would turn around and clap her hands and then turn back around and play when she knew the rest of it. Uh, on the other side of the family, my mother's side of the family planted many churches. Uh, they were very instrumental they were very Christian. And throughout the years, as I was growing up, when I was about, um, I don't know, seven years old, my father went to a seminary school. So I was the daughter of a minister. But throughout the years, there were really problems in the family systems. And the family, the family had problems communicating. I remember when we went to, um, to visit the family, my father would um, inadvertently get into scuffles, verbal scuffles with everybody. And they would just be kind of roiled up in, and um, drama and upset. And it never got any better. And this is between Christians. So obviously the communication was not effective. Obviously, the family was not getting to the bottom of it. On my dad's side of the family, we had get-togethers at his sister and her husband's house every Sunday after church. They were kind of like um, the backbone of the family. They were very strong and held it all together. As they got older and went into old age and sickness and death, the family would flounder and if we have God's word in a family and we have righteousness, then the family should not weaken. Let me say that again. The family should not weaken because one person is gone. It should retain the strength and grow even stronger in the absence of the giants in our family. My mother would pass away very suddenly. And when I was 28 years old, she was 48 
and she would die. We wouldn't know until her autopsy that it was cancer. My father would come straight home from the hospital with her, with her dying and call his old girlfriend. Two weeks later, he was saying, I want to date her. And then three months later, they were married and it was not a good marriage. It was not a good situation. My sister and I and our children would not be welcomed on the property eventually at all. Um, that family was Christian. They taught at uh, Christian schools and the, um, the wife, the daughter and the granddaughter would go to teach at a Christian school the school would be unaware, the leaders, of what was happening privately. And 25 years into my father being part of this family, uh, that family would out him and they would take everything that he ever made um, financially and they would throw him back into my um, lap, basically penniless. And I was supposed to care for my, my father for the rest of his life. The next two and a half years, the most expensive the sickest that he was, it came back on me. I tried at different points as an adult to try to speak into it, to try to bring a Bible to the table. And I was summarily rejected and thrown out of the family for those efforts to communicate and get to the bottom of it. It was a floundering mess. It was a civil war that you could never get to the bottom of. In the next segment that we're going to do, we're going to do a um, audio visual and we are going to show about how communication has broken down throughout the years and um, world wars and everything that has resulted of uh, the things that we see today in the congressional reviews and whatnot and how society suffers at the point when even leaders of the free world won't listen. So communication is so crucial. I would go on to marry and I would be abandoned. Like my father, he was always abandoning us. And I was told at one point in, in counseling, because I was constantly going to counseling throughout the years, they said that the psychological composite of the man that I would attract would try to destroy me. And I really didn't want to believe that, but it showed itself to be true, true, throughout my life. At one point in time, I went for 10 years and I was not um, married or anything. And then when I tried again, it was not only true, it was worse than it was. I spent years crying out to God. I spent years saying, you know, where is this? I went to a church service and a wonderful man of God that I greatly respect. He prayed and he, he put his hands on me and he stopped for a moment. And he said, Vicki, something's been taken from you in this lifetime, and it's as if God owes you back. And he looked really sad, and he moved on, and I was left alone. I was left without a father who loved me because my father did not love us. He left us, and he was an ordained minister. If you go back into the speaking that I did in Malachi, it talks to the priests. The priests, the Levites at that time were like the ministers of our day and age. And it said, you've left what is right. And so with my father being an ordained minister, he was held to a higher standard and he just refused to live up to that. My father would die and go into his last few years knowing that the family my stepmother's family, who he had loved so much and actually called his family and not us, um, they had just abandoned him and left him. So what he had done to his own family was done to him. Only his own family suffered financially and on every level with him thrown into their lap. I had an abandoning, abusive father thrown into my lap. And as unto the Lord, I took care of him, my myself and my daughter's for the last two years of his life to honor our father as we're told to but we knew that he didn't want to be with us he was there because he had to be and communication i'm telling all this story to tell you communication was not an order of the day there was a refusal to ever get to the bottom of anything two weeks after my mother died my mother's mother my grandmother I had lived next door to her for 10 years and she told me, I don't want you or your sister back on the property because I suffer from paranoia. So the deacon's wife 
outed and threw away her own granddaughters and her great grandchildren were gone in the mix. And I was pregnant with my son at that time. So I am coming to you and saying to you, to anyone who hears my voice, to society, communicate. Don't allow this to happen in your vicinity, in your family. If you are a person like me and you are surrounded by unworkability, if you are alone and left alone, please reach out to me. Please reach out to me. And you know, I'm going to say this, the body of Christ does not always understand. The body of Christ is full of wonderful people, many of them that that are raised up into the upper echelons or leadership roles. They've lived really good lives and that's wonderful, but they can't relate to those of us who were abandoned and abused and left behind. They can't relate because they haven't lived that. Their life is too normal. And people who knew me would get to know my story because I had a wonderful business where I was functional. I came up with wonderful friends after my family abandoned me and threw me out. I came up with wonderful friends who were salt to the earth. And people would say to me, I never had any idea that these things had happened to you. So I'm speaking to those who abuse and I'm speaking to those who are abused and I'm telling my story to you as a warning for those who are either in the middle of it on one way in one way or another and I found that there was a lack of anyone to really listen throughout the years, to take me and my family and, and the rest of our whole family under their wing to say, okay, you don't have a family, you're displaced, you're orphaned. So what do you do with orphans? You take them to an orphanage so that they can be either live there in that placement with a family, like through the orphanage, or they can be placed in a family that can take them. And we are in a time today in our in society where this is epidemic, isn't it? The abandonments, the people who feel alone, they don't have what they need. And yet we live in a day of technology and technology will not save you. Let me say that again. Technology will not save you. Jesus Christ will save you. And if I hadn't had Jesus Christ, where would I have been if I didn't have my faith? And in 2008, I actually had to come to terms with that because I looked at God and I said, do you really love me? <laughs> do you really love me? Because I am so alone. How could you allow these things to happen in my life? So, he said to me at the age of 12, you'll be called to step forward and speak in a very sad, very dangerous time in our world. And I'm speaking and I'm telling you, if you were involved in any of this on either side of this, the, the abandoned or the ones who abandon, turn it around, turn to Christ. You know, if you are a Christian, and you feel that you have been abandoned by the body of Christ because I have been at different junctures. I have been by my Christian family. We have a lot of lonely Christians out there, either in the body of Christ or who have left the body of Christ. And the breakdown is in communication. The reason I'm speaking today is because of communication. My thoughts and my prayers go out to you all. And I'm here to say that I understand and my story is not about me at all, not me personally. My story is to share, to say, if you're listening to me, I get it. And God gets it. Never confuse the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with what happens here on this earth. God created the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve to be perfect, 
man's free will, messed it up. And then God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to come on the cross and redeem it so that you could take all that and cast all those cares to him and let him care for you. Come to Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Come into him, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what the world has done. It doesn't matter what fallenness has done. It doesn't matter about those people who have refused to communicate. And if you are that person who has refused and left people behind and spat at them and called them names because I have had all that done, my adult life. I worked to preserve the mind, body, soul, and spirit of my own children against the abuses from within my own Christian family. It's tough out there. It's vicious out there right now, isn't it? As people, including the body of Christ, sometimes leaves the precepts and doesn't want to communicate. But the father's son and spirit are there for you. I have survived, and at the age of 60, within the last year, Hurricane Ian displaced my whole business, and here I am again, moved from Florida to Kentucky, starting over on so many levels, and speaking to you to encourage you in your walk. Walk with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they'll never let you down. His word, God's word, will never let you down. I have survived. I have thrived. And I speak these things to you. Communication, it makes the difference. Please, please become good communicators out there. And sometimes, and I have said it, you have to communicate tough love and tell people, I must separate myself. I've had to do it from the body of Christ sometimes, from my own family. I've been separated from it all at times. And I've walked what looked like alone, but I was never alone. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Keep the faith, everybody. Become good communicators. Turn it around. It can always be turned around. God bless you all. If you like my speaking, my name is Vicki Lee. Please like, share, and subscribe. And feel free to reach out to me if you are alone and you have been abandoned. I'm here for you as well. Have a great day, everybody.